Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Napoleon Toll back again here with some Shuken 2 Fall of the Secret Samurai Scramble for the Far East mod. And in the last turn, we destroyed Takeyama, taking their fortress of Hida, in which you can see in the distance. As of right now, I'm just going to try to maintain the public order. And for those that are wondering, yes, this is the Prussian campaign, as the title suggests. Um, the title also suggest suggests something else, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, we are gonna go off the bat and go to, go around building a uh, cadet school in Hida, and uh, our our uh, military advisor is gonna be instructing our troops and good stuff like whatnot. Um, some provinces I need to take out of tax exemption because it is taking a good chunk of my uh, my economy away, and I'm gonna send my geishas to elsewhere to do stuff. Wonderful stuff. Um, in the last turn we also took uh, Wakasaki. Wasake? Wasa- Wakasa. My bad. Um, from the Obama. And I'm just scanning out the British Army, and as we can see, there is a massive army in, uh, Tabama. Um, and yes, um, the norm- we cancel our military ally alliance- military alliance, military access, and trade agreement with the Northern Alliance, and that is because we are about to join a war- uh, declare war on the Northern Alliance, but as you can see from the title, uh, that's not really gonna happen. <laughs> um, as you can see in the distance, we have our first rail reign is finished, I guess. Um, well, it is finished. Um, I'm also trying to com complete the railroad linking um, the north to the south of my empire, of my colonial empire, my bad. And yes, I'm gonna just start building stuff left and right, so... Um, yeah. Uh, I am trying to produce cavalry, and because cavalry is very good for chasing down the enemy, do not let them regroup, do not let them, um, and yes, do not link them, have them link up. I'm also trying to move troops uh, via um, ship to um, the northern border, because we're going to declare war on the northern lines after this turn. But, as you guys will later see, um, which is probably right now, The United Kingdom declared war on me, so literally I'm at war with the United Kingdom and I have no choice to reject that. Uh, to my comfort, the British Empire at this point is literally at war with everyone in uh, their vicinity, their neighbors. However, the good thing is that they're at war with their neighbors, the bad thing is that they're winning. So that's the bad thing. Um, so, uh, trade agreement is broken with the United Kingdom, that puts my economy on a strain, 5,000 Koku a turn now. Is not the worst, but it's not the best. Um, because I do not have that many armies in the field, um, it is going to be problematic. Oh yeah, and the last turn to uh, give you guys clear, the Sioux also declare war. Their, their capital is Iga. There, you have a massive army in the right here. So yes, I'm, I'm scouting Iga. Um, the Sioux is at war. The United Kingdom is at war. I want uh, peace with the Sioux, but they reject, um, thinking that now the British have joined in. It's going to be easier for them. I want to the, the have a re request alliance with the Dutch, but the Dutch are like, no. Even though I offer them to join their wars, and they're like, nope. Um, I'm gonna, I decided to give them military access, but that is not even favorable to them, because I'm so far away. So yes, that's an unfortunate sight. The British, I want, uh, I think I, they will not want peace, so I didn't even bother to ask around. Um, the British army, in which now I need to do some scouting, has a lot of provinces, as you can see by the map. Um, a lot of provinces left and right. Um, about eight provinces. Uh, they have one island, but that's not gonna that's not gonna be like very important as of right now. It is their, I think, their capital. Actually, no, their capital is Yama 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 Set Setsu. Their ca the British capital is Setsu, so that's interesting. Um, elsewhere, um, the 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 the, the their um uh, their western neighbors, uh, the Yoda, which is what we can see right here on the screen, are at war with the British. So that's wonderful. I'm gonna be sending uh, Rolf and uh, Gunther eventually to to take um to destroy the Sioux. Um, <coughs> the Sioux and the British are not allied allied, so that's very good. Um, yes. So everyone is going to Omi. I have another army in Wakasa from the that we just took from the Obama, and so that's going to be interesting. Um, going to be sending a lot of stuff left and right just to make sure. 
I do have a lot of troops in the north from which I can definitely bring down. Uh, which I do need them right now because the British Empire is no joke. It is, um, I'm expecting a tough war. Um, I was, I was expecting a tough war. But, uh, yes, stuff like that. Um, elsewhere because we are slightly broke. Uh, well, no, we're not broke at all, but like, um, yeah, uh, well, we are taking a lot of money. Um, as you can see, I'm ordering my ship that's ca carrying my legitimate son, Ralph, back to, um, uh, Musashi, and the reason why is that I need an army uh, to go on, uh, to go uh, west via railway. The same exact thing is going to happen, um, except for this army is going to link up with, um, yes. I really want to ask Northern Alliance for a trade alliance, and they are not, like, happy, but they will be, they will ask me for 240 uh, Koku, and I'm like, nope, uh, that's a terrible idea, because at this point you're still not um, powerful enough to make me really consider you as the, the main threat. The main threat as of right now is obviously the British the British Empire. Um, they are probably more powerful than the Americans at that at, at, at that we last fought against. And that is probably because the British have a lot more good units, superior units, and just all around good units, so it is a terrifying sight. Obviously I'm gonna move a lot of my army to, uh, via rail. Uh, which is the rail is at Fukushima, so it's gonna take some time. Um, but uh, we are gonna eventually move them. Um, because the British declared war on me, I thought they were gonna attack w Wakasa, and I was wondering when will they come. I request the peace, but they're like, nope, we do not want peace as as expected. But hey, at least um, their their faction leader is Bruce James. <laughs> That's very interesting. Um, I'm also I'm also gonna end the turn and see what is going on. Uh, the British, the, the Yodo, have two armies in the field, which is very terrifying, uh, fight against the British. Um, they do pretty well, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Sioux decide to c move their army closer to Omi, and um, I'm actually um, pretty, I was pretty, I was, I was literally afraid that they will attack Omi before my main army arrives. Not that it will matter, but um, just the fact that they... they are able to attack Omi is going to be a problem. I'm going to, I decided to put one of my uh, terrible units in Mino just to maintain the public order and then I'm going to move the rest of the army to Omi but that's going to take two turns and if the enemy attacks now they're in a pretty good uh, situation. The, I'm going to move more armies to w w Wakasa and I'm going to scout out Tango just to see if there's a British army in the field. And in, sh in which we last saw that there was a massive British army in the field, so that is pretty terrifying. Um, we're just looking around, stuff like that. Um, my fleet is pretty much not going to be engaging the British fleet. Um, uh, from what I know, the British do have a navy. It's probably better than my navy, but uh, it's um, yeah, it's, it's problematic. Also, um, my our armies. Our, our um, lifeguards have been mobilized, and after that, I'm just gonna have them move, move, and move. As you can see, I'm just trying to move, do a lot of movement. Um, everything is moving along the bat, and yes. Uh, I do spot a British geisha, and she's gonna be a pain to deal with unless I can take her out quickly. The United Kingdom has one ship at least, so that's good to know. Uh, most of their efforts, the British Empire's efforts, are against the Yoda, which is wonderful. Um, because I do not have to fight them head-on, which is a pain. Uh, there is mounting of rest in Yomi because stuff is happening. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to recruit a unit. Probably two, because, well, I'm, I'm ordering a massive recruitment um, in all these wonderful places. I did somewhat of a mistake, but it's a small mistake in the sense that I deployed my army to Shimoda, in which I should have deployed my army to Musashi and then just took the rail. Obviously, I need to go to take the, ra the railroad station and then I can start moving. My army in the north, that is obviously not going to be at war from the northern lines, is going to just form up at the railway station and they're just going to move via rail down south. And once again, I'm building railroads al along the everywhere. As much as I physically can, uh, because my economy is doing quite poor. Because well, the British Empire was my main trading partner, and now they're not. 
So uh, my strategy at this point was um, one to figure out where the heck the British are coming. The other st strategy was to knock out these seven factions that are um, at war with me as quickly as I possibly can, and see what I can do to um, the British in Tango. And uh, that plan obviously changed because the British army is not really in Tango, so I decided to move out my entire army from w Wakaza, and we're going to march on Tango. So that's going to be um, very good for us. But we are not going to do that, at least not now, at least not in winter. The British army stationed there is uh, Highland Colonial Foot and then stuff like that. We'll more, talk more about that once we fight the battle. But as you can see, we're just scouting out the enemy. Um, stuff left and right. The British don't do anything this turn, at least not anything I see. The, two, the Sioux want a peace treaty, but obviously I'm going to reject that because, like, literally you were the ones that declared war on me. And now, um, as you can see off the bat, we have a lot of soldiers recruited. Uh, Tomi has one soldier recruited. Now we can accept them from taxes and they're going to be happy. Gunter and Rolf has, have been moving through Omi. And now they're just going to prepare for an attack on the capital of the Sioux. And they kind of realize their fate, so that is why they are just trying their best to make peace with us. Obviously, I'm not going to accept that piece because for obvious reasons. Um, in Wakaza, my army is preparing to move out just to do some skirmishing, as I call skirmishing with the British. Um, I'm trying to prompt them to respond. Any response is great, but from the looks of it, they don't have a large army at all. Not in Tajima, not in Tango, so my question is, where the heck is the main British army? Um, there was... I was very... I was... Okay, actually, no, I found the main main army and that that is in Kawachi. I do not know what army it is, but it is a massive army. And it's probably going to be aimed at the Yodo. No surprise there. Um elsewhere in the north, the 2000 man army, 2 2000 more man army uh, is going to go via rail. And I'm trying to have them board the railroads, but that's going to be a problem. Ralph my my son is board, preparing to board railroads. And we're going to have him go down south, if that is possible, which is not possible, because as you can see on the screen, um, we do not completely own the province that we are adjacent to, so yeah, that's going to be a problem. As you can see, this is my first time using a railroad, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to be like wondering what the heck is going on. Apparently, for those that don't know, we have to select the province and not the railroad station, so that's interesting. Also, we have to wait a turn. For them to board, sh board eff effectively board the train and then move on. As you can see, that wonderful looking train over there is, yeah, pretty good looking. Just to give you guys a another look at the map, and yes. Um. What else is there to do? Um, there's nothing to do, actually, because um, there was a British army up in the north. Um, um, the Bur uh, for this map, I'm going to be referring to the British army of the north and the British army of the south, in which if there's no British army, I'll just call it the British army. Um, it is spring now, so that's wonderful. There's a massive army at Kawachi that um, is somewhat destroyed, surprisingly. Um, we're going to order the assault on Iga. And I'm just going to wait for um, Gunter to come to support this army, although I can't possibly attack without an army. We're going to assault, uh, we're going to siege Tango, and we're, we can see what the enemy has. Eight. Their, their cavalry, for some reason, has more troops than I, more units than I do. They have Colonial Blackwash, Royal Marines, and Sepoy Infantry. So, uh, Sepoy Infantry is basically Indian infantry that has been conscripted by the British Empire. I'm going to quick save because I do not know if the enemy is going to send another army to reinforce Tango. But um, from my uh, intelligence, apparently, there is no massive army that is going to reinforce Tango. As a matter of fact, um, I don't think there is an army at all. At least not to no what I know of, which is a problem. Um, I'm going to be boarding the destination and I'm going down south. As you can see in the railroad, we just instantly teleport. So that's wonderful. Um, 
I decided whether I should take out the southern, uh, the southern factions and then just go down to Mikasa, although I, then I realized, yeah, if, if I wait out this war too long, the British are just gonna, uh, do stuff, so that's a terrible idea. I really wanted my units to group up first and then, and then they board a train together, but that's not gonna happen. We once again set the destination to down south, but although this is a, the problem is going, uh, using railroads is that sometimes, <coughs> Well, when the distances are too long, you need a turn to uh, wait, and then we go once again on the railroads. So that's interesting. Everything else is looking pretty fine. Um, I'm not really paying to public order or population and stuff like that. Um, the British do attack, sally out. Um, and this is the first battle against the British Empire. Um, they technically have more troops, but mo most of their troops are not uh, regulars. So I'm having it easy. Easy. And yes, um, my guys have a massive hill advantage. British do not they have to come up this hill and they're gonna attack me. As you can see very um, soon, this is this is gonna be reminding for those that know history very well, the Battle of Bunker Hill. So that's interesting. Um, for those who don't know, the B Battle of Bunker Hill was basically a battle, uh, the British battling against the American uh, revolutionaries. Who, uh, the Americans were on a hill basically and the British just assaulted the hill not once, not twice, but three times and after the third time they took the hill. Unfortunately for the British, um, I, don't, I do not think they will be taking the hill today. At least not with colon colon uh, at least not with regular infantry and lifeguards. As you can see, the only problem with this hill is that there are two hills and the other hill is white uh, extended beyond our, our, uh, our lines. So controlling that hill is as much as important controlling the main hill. As you can see, the British army is made up of mostly this cavalry, which are instead of the 60 units, they're 80 units, which is slightly weird. Um, their cavalry look very good, uh, and their scarlet red uniforms. The militia is uh, not that good looking, but once again, the cavalry is good looking. Uh, scarlet red uniforms, as typical as the British Empire. And for those who are w wondering why the heck did the British use scarlet red uniforms, the reason is very simple, and the reason is because the scarlet red uniform is the cheapest dye. Yes, you heard me correctly. The British used red uniforms because it was the cheapest color to get around. Um, all along the, all along the, the battlefield, you can just see British militia running around. We have this unit of Royal Marines with their st standards and colors, that's very good looking. Um, with their little uh, plumes and whatnot, so yes, uh, very good looking. The British kit is not that, not as good as compared to the, um, as the French kit, as you guys will, as, um, as the British realized in the Peninsular Campaign during against Napoleon. Um, the Sepoy Infantry has the exact same kit, but these guys are from India. And they're from at this point. I do not know if have are they um, are they separated from the British British East India Company. Um, right behind them, we have the Highlanders, the Colonial Foot Highlanders, and these guys are the interesting ones. They are Highlanders, but they're just Colonial Foot. I'm actually pretty interested now to um, see um, essentially play my uh, British campaign. A British campaign, to be exact. As you can see, um, literally the British try to do the Battle of Bunker Hill, and they're uh, thankfully for them they're sending in their they're not sending in their entire army at once. Uh, thankfully for me. So yes, the enemy, the British artillery is bombarding us quite heavily, like like also like the real British uh, real Battle of Bunker Hill. But instead of knocking out the ammunition compartment, they decided to order a heavy cavalry charge um, with their uh, light cavalry. Colonial cavalry, for those who don't know, are light cavalry. Up the hill against my Wittenberg infantry, and they're gonna form square. And uh, if the British. I thought that. And uh, when I was playing this battle, I was thinking to myself, well, the British certainly did not learn any anything from the Battle of Waterloo, or else they will not be charging up cavalry uphill. Waterloo was better in the sense that the French cavalry were char the French cavalry were charging in a s essentially on flat terrain. Um, the British are going to move up a lot more troops uh, against my Wittenberg infantry, so I'm going to retreat them behind the hill, in which they will be using the hill somewhat as a cover. As you can see here, 
the British are just moving their entire army on, on, on this hill. On the right flank we have the Sepoys, on the left we have um, we have the Royal Marines, and they're going to do their best. For those that are interested, the East India Company ended 1874, the, the 1st of June. So, um, so that was 147 years ago, and um, if you're, that means at, as of this, as of this point, which is 1860, this battle of, this is the battle of uh, Miyazu, fought in 1860. Um, the East India Trading Company has not officially ended, so that's interesting. As you can see by the colors, it says literally says Sepoy on this Sep Sepoy regiment on their colors, so that's interesting. Um, there is a general um, belief in um, yeah, a little bit of lag here and there because uh, for some reason uh, Western units do have some lag coming with them. Um, I I know, guys, it's it's probably the mod, but hey, uh, I'm just more than happy to have this mod. Um, the Royal Marines on the left run away, and they're going to be literally replaced by the Highlanders. So the Highlanders are going to do a better job, I hope, um, yeah, against their British regulars. Once again, nice looking uniforms, and uh, is that a bagpipe? Oh my god, that's a bagpipe! Yeah, especially with those Highland colors, looks pretty good, and the kilts. Oh my god, this is wonderful. Um, very nice attention, guys. Um, thank you, the modding team. Um, what I was about to say, oh yes, um, there was a general person that pointed out in the in the discord for this mod that it is probably more likely that the Sepoys have more battle experience than the British regulars uh, because most of the British regulars have not fought in real combat while the Sepoys did have did fight uh, maintaining the Indian border and stuff like that the British uh, regulars will eventually fight in the Crimean War and stuff like that but um, it um, from my belief, you can argue that the Sepoys were uh, slightly better than the, well, more experienced in, in this case than the British regulars. And for those that are interested, yes, the British army, up until this point, I actually know, past this point, is the only army in Europe that used live ammunition in their training. Now you might be thinking, okay, what's wrong with that? That means, because European armies were so massive, you really needed to use, like, um, live rounds for training. As you can see on the right, the Sepoys are now retreating, getting the heck away. Um, but that means British armies are more um, trained when it comes to using guns, which will, the British, the French will find very frequently in the Peninsular War. As you can see on my uh, left flank, um, the British cavalry tried once again to charge, and this time they're supported by infantry, which is what you're supposed to do. And I was literally fearing this Wittenberg infantry will not uh, be handling the pressure of this combined assault of infantry and cavalry. So you, you can see in the distance, my cavalry is going to charge and um, support. Um, it is an uphill charge, which means we're gonna. Um, not, it's not going to be that well. But these uh, cavalry going to be charged on the flank because they were fighting my um, units. And when this cavalry routes, which is going to be pretty quick. Um, the entire British army runs away with it, so it is a very good sight. Um, as you can see, this this uh, line infantry, uh, sorry, this militia is already running away. It is not a good day for the British Empire. Um, they've lost an army, and they essentially also with that they lose the settlement that we are about to attack. As you can see, the Prussian cavalry downhill charging, the colonial line cavalry downhill charging. Men are flying. And yes, what not. Um, obviously, the m main priority here is to go for the enemy artillery, which is, um, at this point, a little bit still active. Um, um, after that, it's uh, destroying the regular British Army, which includes Sepoy Infantry, um, Royal Marines, and um, the Highland Foot. So, yes. We lost only 600, um, 263, while the enemies essentially lost 2,700. Now, um, 2700 looks like a lot, but it, 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 it isn't, because most of their losses is, um, militia, so that's, 
terrible, but at least none of their regular infantry lost. Um, the regular infantry were eventually chased down, by the way. Um, but the Northern Lions, as you could just see, um, decided to have a, uh, renew their deal with trade agreement and stuff like that. I reject because I do not want to pay them. Um, and also, I also really want to declare war after I finish the bridge, which is not going to be anytime soon, but hey. I decided to board a railway or the train again, and I'm going to essentially tow me. And we're going to go there right now. The Zoo One Piece, as you can see in the end turn, uh, we're preparing to go to war. Um, we're going to take out uh, more settlements left and right, but yes. Um, this unit is also going to be moving uh, via railway to uh, Tomi. They're going to take a while because they have no general with them, which means um, it's going to be problematic. So, yes. But anyway, uh, the first battle against the British Empire, we win. Um, it is not a clear victory, it is not a clear set in stone victory, but it is a victory. A victory is better than no victory. And we're going to assault the Sioux army. And the Sioux army is basically made up of a lot of, like, essentially uh, terrible cavalry. Well, cavalry, and a lot of terrible infantry. So yes, we're going to be scouting around the British, uh, the British armies. Um, there is a British army in Kawachi, and most of its lifeguards, um, colonial line infantry, highland foot, and some black watch, so that's terrifying. For those that are interested, black watch, black watch is, uh, is not a watch by any means. It's not like a guard unit. It's The black watch are the highland guard, um, the cold stream guards of the highlanders, if that makes sense. And, um... Basically, um, what is going on is, yeah, um, we're gonna auto resolve this. The 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 Black Watch is basically like um, this unit that has been that has is very old. Well, so so is the rest of the British Royal Army. Um, it is like a Highland, a very elite Highland regiment. Their unit was actually. was actually formed as the Royal Regiment of the Highland uh, sorry, the Royal Regiment of Scotland as an infantry battalion of the Royal Regiment of Scotland created in 1881 so this unit is old and but they are pretty dang elite fighting in the Napoleonic Wars fighting at uh, the, the, I, I think they did I think they fought at Waterloo and yes stuff like that I also um, as you can see in the stuff we killed a British agent now was trying to harass my army but he didn't even get the chance, he didn't even get close. So yes. Um, obviously I'm gonna go for assassination on my um, builds. The Yodo are just running around, um, having an army in... Tambo? I don't, uh, yeah. The Yodo have another army, but they're being haunted, tormented by geishas, the British geishas. Um, so yes, that's a good thing for us. The British have a general, but we're not interested in killing him as of yet because we are so far away. And, yep, the United Kingdom is moving around geishas, so we are going to have a big problem fighting Br the British geishas. And for those that are wondering what geishas do, they just basically uh, do not allow your troops to move. And, yes, that's going to be problematic. The Sioux are going to uh, assault and come out of their fortress, which is probably a smart idea. Um, as you can see, uh, we're looking at the battlefield. As you can see, the in the center of the battlefield, there's this massive tower, a uh, shrine to be exact. And you might be thinking, oh, that's nice, except for until you realize, literally, it is floating. Um, like, literally, look at it. It is floating up in the air. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I was really wondering what the heck is going to happen if I shoot at it. Like, it's like uh, if you look at it right now, it's a little bit more obvious. Um, my men are in this situation just trying to build, uh, just trying to do, uh, plant stakes, and we're going to protect our artillery. Although I do find sometimes that when you're, you're building stakes, um, the artillery gets bugged out. Um, I think this it happened in this battle. So yes, it's going to be a problem. Once again, the, <laughs> the shrine is floating, so that's interesting. Um, yep. Um, probably, I think most shrines were added in by the, the mod creators, so that's interesting. Um, nice addition to the battlefield is a, a very good welcome. Um, like, guys, we should uh, let the...
give them some slack, um, the mod creators. They've been doing a very good job. Um, they're actually now doing a lot of new uniforms for um, for the French, the tier 4, 3, and 4. Um, so that's going to be wonderful looking. The enemy army is mostly made up of cavalry. Once again, that's no surprise. We saw it on the campaign battle screen. Um, mostly infantry. My artillery is just pounding at them as of right now. Um, yes. Oh yes, for those that are wondering, um... Uh, artillery, as of this point, are their cannibals bounce, and you might be thinking that's weird. Um, and the reason is the solid balls of can uh, the cannons, the cannon balls of the enemy artillery are made of solid, solid um, iron, cast iron, I believe, I think. And basically, uh, if you aim it at the ground perfectly, it will bounce off the ground, and that would literally cause a lot of problems for um, a lot of nations during various times of the war. As you can see in this situation, um, we're just blasting the enemy cavalry. Um, I or automatically ordered them to switch the grape shot because they are so within range. That is not even a joke how close we need to use grape shot. Because our entire army is using suppressant fire, the enemy cavalry is um, essentially doing a terrible job at charging us. They're literally gonna they're literally gonna walk in front of us. But back to cannibals. So basically, when um, it's general phys phys physics, guys. Uh, when an enemy unit, um, when a cannibal literally comes across, um, it is gonna essentially um, be shot away from the ground, if that makes sense. So it bounces off the ground, is what I'm trying to say. Now we can see the enemy cavalry just literally just walking into us. Uh, my artillery crew is out of commission, so I'm gonna move them back as, as quickly as possible. But uh, they are going to be charging on the stakes, not as powerful as a charge as you would expect, but it's still a charge. Elsewhere, on the on my right, which is held by um, line infantry, the enemy general is going to be charging in, so I do not know what the heck he was thinking. Um, but once again, um, samurai armies value bravery, but this is not bravery anymore, it's called stupidity. And as a matter of fact, um, most of the, the general's bodyguard dies. The general, as you can see, is wearing um, this wet white headband. So he is very obvious. Um, right behind the general, I literally uh, right behind my first unit, I have a line of Wootenberg infantry. But for some reason, the Wootenberg infantry do not open fire, so that's problematic. The general once again is wearing a white headband. Um, most of his general's bodyguards are just getting shot apart, but um, the general for some reason is not going to get shot apart. So that's interesting. Uh, as a matter of fact, the general will be the last person to um, live until we shoot off until we kill the general. So it's the entire unit killing off this poor general. And once again he's wearing this white headband and he's the only person alive as at this point. We finally killed the general, we stabbed him off his horse and his horse is actually sent running. Um, elsewhere in the on the left um, the entire uh, enemy cavalry is just gonna be charging straight at us. Um, they're trying to take our colors which we're trying uh, definitely to defend. Well then, um, with, uh, so basically what the tactic I'm doing here is I'm going to make uh, two squares on each flank. My infantry are going to be in the center just shooting whatever goes through these two flanks. And yes, the, the enemy infantry is going to catch up and for the first time, well, one of the first time in battle, the enemy spear levy is like, going to be fighting my um, infantry. And surprisingly, they actually do quite well. Um, they do have these massive spears and my guys do have these short bayonets, so yeah, that's going to be problematic. Elsewhere in the center, you could you, you saw cavalry movement, and that was because the enemy cavalry actually penetrated deep into my lines. So I called my own cavalry and just countercharged them. And surprisingly, for whatever reason, they do a terrible job. Um, my guys are opening fire on the enemy, and the enemy is basically like doing stuff. Very nice, uh, like very nice. Um, a lot of dead bodies here, especially along the cannons. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah. The enemy is using uh, these Tepu Ashigaru, which is basically uh, Ashigaru armed with essentially guns. And they're not doing so well. As a matter of fact, they're like, running the heck out of here. So yes, the entire enemy army routes. And that is pretty much it for this episode. So have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, bye. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out. So it is a good idea to click on that notification button. 
Anyways, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.